Hey guys, this is Builder William Strain. In today's video, I wanted to talk about my process of doing a pour bottle image. In this particular image, I'm using a ginger beer called uh, Bundaberg, which is from Australia. I, I really like the sort of the short squat nature of this bottle, and I thought it would work well for the set idea that I had. In past images, I've done a bottle pour mainly on on lights with just a white background, but since I wanted to kind of add a little bit more interest to the image, I wanted to add a little bit of a background. So I got some wood paneling and I've created sort of a solar flare, light flare on the top corner of the image. And that's sort of my set overall. Um, the main topic of today's video is gonna be the, the things I think about when I'm doing the actual shoot uh, and pouring water out of the, uh, pouring liquid out of the bottle. But let me talk briefly about what I've done to uh, prep the bottle and get it ready for the pour shot. Uh, the first thing I did was I uh, did a clear coat spray paint uh, on the front label so that if the label gets wet, and it will undoubtedly get wet, uh, it doesn't just sort of disintegrate in the middle of the shoot. Uh, the other thing I did is I took off the back label because I don't need it and I don't want light to kind of get interrupted by the back label. I then cut off the bottom of the bottle itself uh, so that I could pour through the bottom. Um, I used a bottle cutter. It's, they're usually pretty cheap and pretty simple to do. The other thing I did is I went ahead and put some duct tape around the bottom edge so I didn't accidentally cut myself. I then took it, I put it on set with my glass that I was going to use. I uh, manipulated and moved everything where I wanted it to be. Once I had everything put into place, uh, including all my lighting for the background, I took the bottle that I was going to use off set and I dressed it using some uh, glycerin, a glycerin and water mixture, which creates a nice little water droplets all over the bottle to make it look nice and cool. When I'm doing a pour image, I, I'm always going to end up doing it as a composite. So I have to really think about how I'm going to break the image or images up to create that composite while I'm shooting. I don't really want to sit there at the end and try to figure it all out then. The way I like to do it is once I get the spritz on the bottle, I'll do a focus stacked image or images from the front of the label all the way through the bottle so that I know I've got a crisp, clean image of the bottle itself without any problems. Um, that sort of covers everything. I may or may not use the entire focus stack. I may decide to make it a very shallow image, but at least I've already got that image of a nice, clean, crisp bottle image all the way through. Um, the next main thing is obviously the pour as it's coming out of the front of the bottle. So uh, in this particular case, I used a little two ounce measuring cup. I felt like that was a good amount to pour through at one time. I'd fill this up. If I poured too slowly, it kind of came out as a trickle. If I poured really fast, it came out as a sort of a torrent. So you kind of have to play around and judge how fast or how slow you need to pour it out of this thing. I'd, I generally pour pretty quickly, rattle through several images with a remote. Uh, I'd get one, two, maybe three images of the liquid coming out, and then I would start over again and do it over and over again. I'd then take the glass off set, pour everything out, and then put it back on set and take it again. After I get a nice image of the pour, the next thing I think about is the liquid going through the bottle itself. When the uh, liquid is kind of rushing through the back of the bottle, it'll pick up highlights from the background light and make the liquid glow in very interesting ways. So uh, what I try to do is I try to go through and find an image where I really like the way the liquid is going through the glass portion of the bottle. Sometimes it goes up to the back and it's just like glowing all over. Sometimes it's a nice little trickle on the bottom, but really I'm trying to create a sense of motion of it going through the bottle. And I don't have to have it as the same image as the pour image. I'll dice it up between the bottle, the liquid going through and the pour. So once I've got those three images, the next thing I concentrate on is the glass itself. I want a really nice, clean, crisp look to the glass. I want the ice to look really good. Uh, in this particular case, I want the bubbles to look really pretty. I want the highlight on the glass to look really great. I just want the main portion of the liquid to look its absolute best. The last thing I generally do is I look for some type of great motion on top of the glass as the liquid would enter the glass. Most of the time I'm looking for some type of wave at the top of the glass. In this particular case, I, I was trying to get waves. I got several of them that I really liked, but the thing that I think I liked the most was there was a point where the 
liquid had all settled. The carbonation was uh, just great enough that it was creating this great sparkle of mist as it was uh, kind of the carbonation was coming out. And I really like the way that looked, and I'm sure that's probably going to be the image that I end up using in the final image. Up next, I just wanted to do a really quick walkthrough and show you how to set up all the lighting. Um, I sort of do things in stages whenever I'm setting anything up. So the first thing I did was I set the bottle and the glass to where I wanted them to be. Uh, if you've seen any of my past videos, you know that I like to kind of create a gradiated light on the front of my bottles. So that's what I'm doing right here with this diffusion panel and strip box. Um, I try to create the highlight of the gradient just to the side of the B in the uh, name of the product and then gradiate towards the front. The next thing I wanted to do was create, uh, create uh, a little bit of fill light, and that's what this one, this light right here with the barn doors is doing. Uh, it has barn doors, but it also has a polarizing gel on the front end of it. What I did is I just used it to fill the light, and then I rotated the polarizing gel to get rid of any unwanted highlights in the glass over here. The next thing I did was work on the background. I've got some wood paneling back here just to act as a background. Uh, this light is just bare bulb with a half CTO gel on it. It's nice and close to the wood so that it creates that nice gradiated light on the, uh, on the top corner that gradiates out to the side. Nothing too spectacular about that. The last thing, or the last light that I had was I have this Odd Snoot, which is essentially an optical snoot. Um, this one is by Nice Photo. I know that a couple of different places make this. What it allows you to do is put a lens on the front of this snoot, and that way you can zoom in and out. Uh, you can also focus, and that'll blur or harden the edges of the highlight that you're creating. I've also got a polarizing filter on the front of this to get rid of any unwanted highlights on this. What this one is doing is acting as just a way of highlighting the label itself uh, and nothing else. So this one's lighting the label, this one's acting as fill, that one is essentially my key light, and this one right here is just my background light. To attach the bottle, I've got this uh, sort of homemade clamp. It's two small A clamps uh, connected to a sort of bendable uh, wire pole thing right here. I, all I really needed is this angle change between here and here. So once I got it into place, I stopped uh, moving it around and I just, what I would do is if I needed to move the bottle, I either rotated it right here or I moved the stand itself forward or backwards or up or down. I really don't use this portion of this. I just need it to clamp down and hold on to the glass. My intention for this video was just to sort of give you a good rundown of uh, my thought process when I'm doing a shoot like this. I hope this video was helpful. This is what the final image looked like after all of the retouching. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a wonderful day.